Each tax year, you get an ISA allowance, which sets out the maximum you can save within this tax-free wrapper. You can choose whether you want to invest in to one type of ISA or whether you want to split your allowance between different types of ISAs. However, even if you choose to split it, you can't invest more than a total of £20,000 across the different types each year. Any savings or investments which stay within the tax-free ISA wrapper will continue to earn interest or experience investment growth or, of course, loss year on year and therefore be tax-free as long as you keep them in the ISA. There are lots of different options available, but ISAs fall into five main types, which I will talk through in this video. So first up is the cash ISA. The cash ISA is just like a normal savings account, but any interest you earn is tax-free forever. So any interest you earn doesn't count towards your personal savings allowance, which is £1,000 a year for basic rate taxpayers and £500 for higher rate taxpayers. You can choose from instant access cash ISAs, those where you need to give notice to withdraw your money, and fixed rate cash ISAs, where they may have penalties if you access your money early, or you know, therefore within the during the during the fixed rate period. As with most cash savings accounts, you can expect to receive a lower level of interest than the return that you might achieve if you invested in a stocks and shares ISA. The next type of ISA is indeed a stocks and shares ISA, and you can use your ISA allowance to invest in the great companies of the world, which can be a fantastic option if you're looking to save for the long term, probably a minimum of five years. If you've decided to invest in a Sox and Shares ISA, there's some significant advantages over non-ISA investments. Sox and Shares ISAs are exempt from capital gains tax, bond interest, and tax on dividend income. Capital gains tax is a tax on profits that you pay when selling your investments. And whilst there is a capital gains tax allowance, meaning you can make some gains if you hold investments for a long time before selling them, selling them the gains can be quite large. So starting to shelter your investments in a stocks and shares ISA early on and continuing to do so each year can be of a huge benefit long term. As with any stock market investment, investing in stocks and shares ISAs brings with it a higher level of volatility and risk rather than a cash ISA. But equally, the prospect of higher returns. The third ISA option is the lifetime ISA, often abbreviated to a LISA. The LISA limit is only £4,000 a year and you have to be aged between 18 and 39 to qualify to open one. So that puts me out of the game, I'm afraid. The state will add 25% bonus on top of your savings, quickly turning £4,000 into £5,000 each year. So an excellent guaranteed return on your savings. As long as you have opened a LISA and made your first contribution before you turn 40, you can make contributions up until you turn 50. However, there are limitations. You can only use a LISA to save for buying for your first home or for saving for your retirement. So if you want to withdraw the money, you can only do so if you're buying your first home or age over 60. Withdraw it for any other reason or at any other time and you're going to pay a 25% withdrawal fee of the amount that you withdraw. With a lifetime ISA, you can invest in either cash or stocks and shares. Next is the innovative finance ISA, where you lend your money to others and get interest tax-free. Invest in an innovative finance ISA, and the company offering the ISA will use your money to lend to borrowers or businesses. This is often known as peer-to-peer -peer lending. Now, there are risks involved and you could lose money if the people you've lent to can't repay it or having to wait to withdraw your money as another investor needs to buy out your loan. Crucially, your savings aren't protected by the financial services compensation scheme in the other way ISA products are. Finally, there's the junior ISA, specifically for children. You can save up to £9,000 for your child in either cash or stocks and shares or split the allowance between the two. Your child can't touch the money until they turn 18 and the account is held in their name, but it's opened and managed by you. If you take a look at my videos specifically on junior ices and child SIPs for more details. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I'm Justin King. I'm a chartered and certified financial planner. My aim is to help people live successful lives and that often involves understanding your money. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, press the like button to help more people like you find my channel and subscribe so you'll be informed when we put out new videos. For now. I'm Justin King, helping you live your best life.